Hello and welcome back to Stop and Go F1 for this, our Mexican Grand Preview video. It's a bit late, I've got a bit of a cold, so if my voice is a bit funny, that's what that's all about. Don't you worry though, we're fighting through, it's quarter to one in the morning, it's a late night edition of Stop and Go F1, but we're here to talk all things Mexican Grand Prix, including news, upgrade corner, special helmet street, free practice roundup and our predictions of course as well so make sure you like and subscribe before we get into any of that and of course a huge shout out to our members dakota the joyous james robin myers and cinnamon strudel if you want to become a member click the link in the description down below but before we get into this week's news if you were watching last time out for the united states grand prix you will know that for the entire weekend I wore a cowboy hat to embrace the culture of Texas. So, here we are in Mexico, and I thought it would be appropriate to embrace the culture of Mexico. So, uh, this is a bit harder to put on than the cowboy hat, so I'm going to put the microphone down for a second, also take the glasses off, but here we go everyone. We're embracing some culture right here with the luchador mask. For the Mexican Grand Prix. I hope you enjoy. Wow. I now can't see. Um, I hope I don't look too ridiculous. I don't know how Rey Mysterio does it. Anyway. So we get into some Mexican Grand Prix news. Because there's a lot to talk about. Firstly. A big story that's kind of come out of nowhere this week surrounds Red Bull and Oscar Piastri. Helmut Marco has come out and said that Red Bull will decide their second driver at the end of this season. Saying, at the end of the season, we'll sit down to get together and decide who is the best teammate for Verstappen at Red Bull. And then he added, let's put it this way, Mark Webber is in intensely seeking talks. Hinting that Oscar Piastri could make the move from McLaren to Red Bull for 2025. Oscar Piastri has now commented on this, because of course this was every question he had to answer this week, and he has said, I think we all know Helmet says a lot of things in the press. As far as I'm aware, there are no truth to it. I'm very happy where I am. The team has supported me massively since I came to F1. They gave me an opportunity in F1. At the moment, in the standings, we are in a very happy place. So I'm more than happy to stay here at the moment. So, Oscar Piastri looks like will not be joining Red Bull, which is a shock to absolutely no one. But a story that came and went very quickly this week in the world of Formula 1. Sticking with Red Bull though, because Sergio Perez, a lot of pressure on him this weekend. His home GP, the people there, absolutely love him. He's desperate to perform well, especially after last year when he went out on Turn 1. He's looking to do better here, but he has been quite open about his season this uh, this week. He said this actually, when he, said, he said, I know I've had a terrible season. So if I can get a strong result, I think it can change my season. I think momentum in F1 is very important, but I also know how this sport works, and it's all about your last race. If I get a good one here, my season can definitely take a U-turn. We can't unlock the full potential of the car. We are trying different things. So a very honest look at his season there from Sergio Perez, who very freely admits that this season has been bad for him, because it has been. But hopefully, like he says, hopefully he can turn it around a bit today. I, you know... I'm a big fan of Sergio Perez. I, I think he's good. And I know he hasn't been good this year. But, I mean, when Sergio was in the likes of Sauber or Force India, I was always a big cheerleader for him. And I'd love him to have a properly good result here in his home Grand Prix. So hopefully he can get that done. But the, the big news here this weekend is surrounding McLaren, who have launched a bid to overturn the five-second penalty that Lando Norris received for his overtake on Max Verstappen during the United States Grand Prix. So apparently they have seen some kind of new evidence that the stewards did not see at the time, so they have launched their right to appeal. We will hear, I imagine, very soon if this has been overturned or not, but they have the right to review it. Personally, I feel like nothing has changed. They haven't said what this new evidence is, but from what the people at Sky are saying, it seems like their whole argument is based around... Um, 
maybe saying that Max was the attacker rather than Lando at that point in time, because it depends on the overtake laws are different depending on if you're attacking from the outside or the inside. So when the stewards have reviewed it, they have seen it as Lando being the attacker going around the outside, whereas if the attacker is on the inside, you cannot uh, force them off, which is what happened with George Russell. But from the point of view of Max defending, it's not as bad to to force them off. So I think what McLaren are going to try and say is because Lando was briefly ahead, that made Max the attacker. Personally, if that's the way they're going, I don't see that working. I don't think that will help them in the slightest. Um, of course, they have their right to appeal. I think, realistically, they should just move on. But I think Zach Brown's in a really weird place at the minute. And I know me dressed like this and talking about someone else being weird is uh, you know, quite ironic. But hear me out on this one. Because, you know, McLaren have been in a good place for a long time this year. For they have been consistently quick throughout a lot of this season, not at the start, but especially uh, from the midpoint up until last weekend. And all this time, Zach Brown has been like, "Yeah, we do our talking on the track. We'll do our talking on the track." And when he had the fast car, he was very happy to do his talking on the track. But last weekend, they turned up, and they weren't the fastest car anymore. And since last weekend, Zach Brown has been very happy to do his talking. Not on the track, because he hasn't shut up for two weeks. Firstly, it was the whole Red Bull bib thing. Now, we didn't really speak about that last week, because it happened within the week. So we didn't have time to talk about it. But, for me, it was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Because Zach was proclaiming that this was a massively illegal thing that Red Bull had, that was massively gaining them an advantage everywhere they went. But you could tell... It wasn't a big deal by two things. Firstly, Red Bull had told everyone they had it for three years. It was part of their open source thing that they had. So any F1 team could look at the Red Bull open source files and see that they've had that for three years. Secondly, when this rumor started about this whole bib device thing, Red Bull came out immediately and said, oh yeah, that's us. We have it a bit different. That's us. If you're hiding something, you don't come out and say that you have it immediately. You know, F1 teams all the time are pushing the boundaries and trying to tweak the rules and whatever it might be. Never in the history of Formula 1 has a team had an illegal device which is aiding them and they've come out and just admitted it for that first time. Never, ever. So you could tell straight away that this wasn't a big deal. But Zach Brown continues to act like this is a huge deal that we all need to look into, when truly it's not. The FIA have come out and said it's not a big deal. Everyone else said it's not a big deal. Zach Brown will not let it go. Then, add on top of this, our good old friend Helmut Marco. he was asked if he thought that uh, Lando Norris had the mentality to battle Max Verstappen in a championship battle, and he said no. And Zach Brown heard this, and then said that Helmut Marker was wrong to say that because it was attacking Lando Norris's mental health. And it's just like, either you misheard what he said, or you're trying to twist his words. And the thing is, Zach, you can tell how far off the line Zach Brown is on this, because I'm defending Helmut Marko, which never happens. But Helmut Marko was not commenting on Lando Norris's mental health. He was saying he does not have the mental strength to fight Max Verstappen in a title battle, which, from what we've seen so far this year, is true. It's entirely different from a mental health thing. It's not saying he has a weak mental health or anything like that. It's just saying when the pressure is really high in those dying moments of the season where it's you or the other guy and you've got to get your elbows out and you've got to get it done, Lando Norris is not the guy who's going to have that kind of mental strength the same way a Max Verstappen would. And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that. You may disagree with me here, but I think there's nothing wrong with saying that. Especially, you know, of course Helmut Marko is going to back Max Verstappen, because that's his guy. But also, Max Verstappen has proved that he can handle the pressure of a title battle going to the line. Lando Norris has proved over the years before that sometimes, when the pressure is on him, he does tend to crack a little bit. 
So it's just stating facts from here. And I think Zack tried to twist that into something that it wasn't, which I was not a big fan of. So it just seems like the second McLaren haven't got that advantage on the track, Zack Brown is just coming out of the gates, punching anything that moves. And it's not a good look for him. It's not a good look for Lando Norris. It's not a good look for the team. It's really, really bad. And someone needs to sit down with Zach and go, Zach, stop talking. People like you. You're having a good year, but you're going to ruin it if you keep on running your mouth because you're saying some really stupid stuff. And that comes from me, who sat here at five to one in the morning wearing a luchador mask with glasses on the outside. I know what stupid looks like, and I don't want that to be you. But you're, you're borderline. So we move on to another story now, because this weekend is Fernando Alonso's 400th Grand Prix. Or is it? No, it's not. And I'm, I'm in big conspiracy theory mode here, because this is not his 400th Grand Prix. It's his 400th Grand Prix involvement, but not his 400th Grand Prix. Because at the 2001 Belgian Grand Prix... He didn't start because he had a broken gearbox. In the 2005 USA Grand Prix, he withdrew from that race along with the 15 other drivers. It was the whole tyre gate thing. He didn't compete in that race. At the 2017 Russian Grand Prix, he didn't start due to an electronics issue. So, this is Fernando Alonso's 397th Grand Prix. Not his 400th. And that is a hill I am very willing to die on. I'm very upset about it. Who would like some special helmet treats? Special helmet treat time, everyone. It's a fun one this week as well. Everyone kind of pushes the boat out a little bit for the Mexican Grand Prix. Let's uh, let's have a look here. Um, if I can, I, I'm really struggling with this mask. I don't, I don't think I'm going to wear the mask for the whole weekend because it's really quite itching my nose. It's very uncomfortable. Anyway, here's Carl Sainz's helmet. I like it a lot. You know, it's the classic uh, Mexican style. It has got the chili on the back. I haven't got a photo of that because I forgot to get it. Uh, but yeah, overall, good stuff from Carlos Sainz. Sho Guan Yu's gone for kind of like a luchador style as well. Very good stuff from him. Sergio Perez, of course, he's going to have a special helmet for this race, his home race. And again, the luchador style. He actually has a, um, there you go, he had that mask as like a proper luchador mask as well. This was on Wednesday on the press day. Overall, good-looking stuff from Sergio Perez. Charles Leclerc always uh, delivers the goods on Special Helmet Street, and he's just taken his normal helmet design, but taken that bit that is usually red and put it with his kind of traditional Mexican stylings on the inside. Very good from there. Fernando Alonso, to celebrate his 397th Grand Prix, has got this special helmet here full of photos throughout his career. You can see... There's uh, from one of the podiums of Aston last year, a couple Ferrari things here. I think that's when he won the world title. If you go to the back of the helmet, you see a very young Fernando Alonso there. Very young indeed. Again, a couple more Ferrari things. Even his awful time in his second run at McLaren is represented here on the Alonso helmet. So that's pretty cool. What else we got? It's Pierre Gasly with the kind of Cinco de Mayo, is that what it's called? I don't, maybe the Day of the Dead, that kind of thing. Looking really nice. I like that a lot. Um, Frank Colapinto's got a special helmet here. Not celebrating anything Mexican at all, but it's a tribute to Carlos Reutemann, who I'm a huge fan of. I love Carlos Reutemann, one of the best drivers ever to not win a world title. Properly, properly underrated driver. I'm a big fan of him. The last big Argentinian driver before uh, Colapinto, and he retired in 1982. I think it was. So, yeah, paying tribute to the legend that is uh, Carlos Reutemann. So, very happy with that there. That is Special Helmet Street. That's that's us done there. Um, let's uh, press the right button. There it is, everyone. Uh, it's time for Upgrade Corner. And I've forgotten to write it down. So, that's, that's bad on my behalf. But, again, it's two minutes to one in the morning. So... My brain's preoccupied with wanting to go to bed, so you'll have to forgive me for that. I'm trying to find the thing where I, I got it before, because there's, there's not too many uh, upgrades to report uh, this weekend. Uh, can I find it? Yes, I found it, everyone. Everyone calm down. So, 
Five teams are upgrades in, in Mexico this weekend. So the first one is Red Bull, who've got new engine cover and new front corner. Uh, a lot of these teams who have these upgrades are mainly cooling-based, because, of course, it is very hot in Mexico. Uh, but also, with the altitude as well, you need to cool the engine more than usual. So both, this, both these upgrades here for Red Bull are focused around cooling. This mask looks ridiculous. I, I can't see a bloody thing. Oh my god, it's all gone wrong. Oh dear. Right, uh, next one is Ferrari. Again, cooling loose. They're huge on the Ferrari. I guess they're maybe a bit worried that their engine might explode. Uh, McLaren, once again, engine colour and cooling loose. But they have got a brand new floor body as well on the McLaren. Although, it, they've only got the one. So in FP1 today, uh, there was a few rookies in the car, including uh, Paso Award was in Lando Norris's car. Now Lando Norris has the new floor this weekend, but for FP1 they put it on Piastri's car so they could get a more, uh, you know, understandable test from a more regular Formula One driver. And Oscar, P oh, my lights have gone off. Oh, that's because it's one o'clock in the morning. Um, I have my lights on a timer. So at 1 o'clock in the morning, the lights turn off, so I know that I have to stop making videos and go to bed. Unfortunately, that's not an option this time, because I'm recording the preview. Um, Alexa, turn on office lights. We're back, everyone. What was I saying? Yeah, so Oscar Piastri had the, um, had the new floor in FV1, and really seemed to struggle with it, was not happy with it whatsoever, really, really struggling. Now, the times from FP2 are really all over the place, because there was a, a Pirelli tyre test, so no one really got any laps that we can really analyse anything from, because the majority of the laps were on this new tyre that we don't know what it was. Lando did get a medium tyre lap in towards the end, but he was never really up there in contention with any lap times, so... This new floor from McLaren doesn't seem to be going too great as of right now, but it's one to keep an eye on as we continue throughout the weekend. Um, Williams got a new beam wing and new engine cover. Again, um, the beam wing is a circuit-specific one in terms of straight line speed and drag because of that huge straight that they have in the Mexican Grand Prix, and engine cover is all about cooling yet again. And then finally, it is the racing bills, New floor fences, floor fences, floor edge, engine cover, and cooling leaves. Again, all to do with uh, local heat, altitude, and straight line speed. There you go. That is upgrade corner. Let's go now to free practice roundup. And as I said, FP2 was a bit of a washout, to be honest with you. The, the tyre test was there. Let's start with FP1, though. Um, the big thing from FP1 was a bit of a crash between Ollie Behrman and Alexander Albon. Ollie Behrman totally offline, trying to let Albon go past. Albon lost the car on the kerbs, collected Behrman with him, and both of them were out, only setting seven laps each from there. Uh, Behrman, one of the few, one of the many um, rookie drivers in the test in FP1. It was him, Robert Schwartzman, Felipe Drogovic, uh, uh, Paso Award, Kimi Antonelli was there as well. So yeah, a few rookies in on FP1, which is always good to see. But yeah, Albon and Behrman, that crash there did bring out a, the second red flag of FP1. The first red flag was due to a little bit of debris, which surely could have been uh, sorted with a double wave yellow. But it does seem like recently we are heading that way in terms of practice sessions. If there is some debris, they do throw a red flag, which I disagree with, but I'm sure they have their reasons. Uh, at the end of FP1, it was George Russell on top, uh, Carlos Sainz in second, and Yuki Tsunoda, four people in FP3. Max Verstappen was fourth, but towards the end of the session, uh, complained of uh, lack of power in the car. In between the sessions, they said that they had it fixed. It was something wrong with the turbo. He would go out in FP2, but would hear a uh, complaint of strange noises from the engine and again would uh, have a lack of power. Didn't set a time in FP2 in the end because they were looking over the car so much. So something is wrong with Max Verstappen's car. 
Uh, they should be able to fix it before actually qualifying, but if it is something seriously wrong, he may need a new engine, and I think that would result in another uh, grid place penalty for him from there. Uh, as we go into FP2, like I said, tyre test was the big headline here, uh, so we can't really take too much away from here because we don't really know what happened. Uh, Albon didn't go out and set a lap time because his car was still being repaired from the crash in FP1. Verstappen went out a couple times but didn't set a lap time because uh, of the power issue. Leclerc was a bit delayed, his car being repaired because it was his car that Behrman was in when Albon hit him, but he did go out and set up some good lap times in the end. Carlos Sainz topped that session. But the big story was George Russell, who had a huge interest in a quite strange one as well. I've never seen someone go off of the corner he went off on, took way too much curve, spun out, and uh, hit the wall from there, and he was out. Big crash for him. Uh, they did take him to the medical uh, facility. It seems like he is okay, which is very good. But yeah, big crash for George Russell. Uh, second crash in less than a week. And what's really quite interesting here is these Mercedes cars. So George Russell... Uh, had the upgrades on his car in uh, Texas, which is when he crashed in qualifying. Then uh, Lewis Hamilton had his upgrades on the car, and he spun out in the race. And now George Russell here had, I think, some upgrades, but not all, and he's crashed in practice. So there's something seriously wrong with the Mercedes at the minute. Hopefully they can get to the bottom of that. But yeah, um, Ferrari continue to look good. As I said, Carlos Sainz on top of that one. Oscar Piastri in P2. Yuki Tsunoda yet again in P3. But again, hard to read just because of the tyre test. We'll have to wait until FP3 tomorrow, which is when I imagine they'll be wanting to get loads of time in because although it was an hour and a half worth of practice too, none of it was representative for what we're going to see uh, this weekend. So let's move on to our predictions here. And of course, our predictions are never wrong. Never, ever wrong. So... My first prediction is complete and utter Ferrari domination. I think Ferrari are quick. Ferrari look quick. From what we've seen so far, from what we saw last time out, even go back to Singapore. I said it at the time in Singapore, that Ferrari was quick, but they messed it all up in, in uh, Q3. If they hadn't messed up in Q3, I think Ferrari could have challenged Lando in Singapore. If they can get it all right here, they can as well. Because if you remember last year, they locked out the front row. It was the Leclerc and Sainz front row last year, and they were nowhere near the fastest car. Here, I think they might be the fastest car. I think they can do it again. Lock out the front row and a 1-2 on the Sunday. My second prediction is, I think, yet again, Max Verstappen will outscore Lando Norris. It's not been a good weekend for Max so far with the um, engine issues, but... If there's a track that he can pull something special at, it's here. He has won here the last three years in a row. He has five wins at this track, the most of anyone in history. He, This is a special, special track for him. He always does well here. So I think he can outscore Lando yet again. So there is the preview video for you there. I'm taking this mask off. It is so uncomfortable. How the hell does Rey Mysterio do that? Oh, my God. My nose is so itchy. It's a it's a bad time, everyone. I didn't enjoy that at all. I won't be wearing that all weekend. That was it. That was the Luchador mask. I hope you enjoyed because I'm not doing that ever again. That was so uncomfortable. Anyway, there'll be loads of stuff to come on the channel, by the way. I will have um, qualifying reaction tomorrow, or today, actually, because it is Saturday now. And then race reaction on Sunday. Driver ratings on the Monday. All that to come on the channel, so subscribe for all of that. I will see you there. I'm going to bed now. See you in the... Well, not in the morning. See you tomorrow or well, today. See you when I see you. Until then, though, have a good one. Goodbye.